crafty friends it's Tina the scrap and rabbit and I have a project share as well as a process video and this is a project that I made as a guest designer for the die cut and divas and the theme is under the sea and this is what I came up with and for this project I used my Cricut I used dies and I used stamps and so I'm going to go ahead and go through the process of everything that I did. I did get a, a request to go through from beginning to end how I use my Cricut. So I'm going to also show you how I did that. It's not going to be a really detailed tutorial, more of just a process of how I run through Design Space with the project and how I put a project on there. So if you are interested in a step-by-step -step tutorial on all the workings of Design Space, I'm pretty well versed. I use my Cricut all the time. And so if you are interested in something like that, just go ahead and comment below and I'm more than happy to do that. But this is the process video for this project. And so let's go ahead and get started. So here we are at my desktop and I did get a new microphone so hopefully I don't sound like I'm talking from a tin can. But I'm gonna go ahead and click on the Cricut Design Space which I have on my desktop. And let's see, I'm going to go ahead and click on new project. I don't know exactly what the name of my image is, but on the left hand side of the design space, if you click on images, you can do a search. And I do know that I'm looking for a seahorse because that's what the bag is. So if I type in seahorse under here on this search bar and go ahead and click on search, it should give me all the images that have seahorses. So I should be able to find the little bag by doing this. And so here it is. And so what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and click on that, click on insert images, and it should appear on my, my Design Space Works my work area here. So it imports at a size that's really, really tiny. And so now I have to figure out what size I want it to be. So here you have the width and the height. And I know that if I'm using a 12 by 12 sheet of paper, the biggest that I can have this is at about 11 and a half before it tells you that you have to use a bigger mat. Sometimes 11.6 will work. And so it goes ahead and it, uh, raises the size or it enlarges the size and if I want to know it's kind of hard to look at all these little tick marks and figure out where the score lines is and how high it is and all that so you have a total width and you have a total height but you don't really have an idea of how big the box is and so what I like to do is I will just insert a square something similar to what I have and so if I go like this and I do on this front panel this is kind of this is basically the size that the box is going to be. And so I just try to match it up. And this is not including the, the decorative top. But if I look at this square, it says that it's about three and a half by three and a half. So it's a pretty small box. I'd like for it to be taller. And because everything is all attached and grouped together, I'm thinking I can stretch this a little bigger and I can't go too big because it will distort the image. But if you look at the image here and if you go to this little lock box and you unlock it, you can get it to stretch the way that you want. And right now I just want to stretch it tall wise and I just want to kind of get an idea to see how how it looks. So I stretched it a little bit and so far my image is not that isn't distorted to where it looks funny. And so I just went a little bit more and then I can take my little box again to see okay well how far how much bigger did I get to go. And so now my box is about 3.6 by 3.7 so I got it to go a little bit bigger. I want to try to get a little bit more and so I'm thinking, that looks good. It's made my box taller and it didn't distort the image to where it looks funny because you don't want it to look all stretched. The seahorses still look like seahorses. The shells still look like shells. And so I'm happy with that. And so right now it looks like my box is going to be about four inches before the decorative border and still about the three and a half or three, yeah, three and a half inches wide because it can't be more than... 11 point, let me change this back to 11.5. 
Okay, so once you get it to the dimensions that you like, and I do like to even mine out. Let me see if I go 8.5, what does that look like? Still looks like seahorses and seashells to me, and so again, I can just kind of go to my little box there, and I know that the box area that can actually contain things, it's gonna be about three and a half by four inches. So I'm not happy with that. And I'll go ahead and I'll lock this again so I don't change any of the dimensions. And so now I can run this through my Cricut. And so the way that I do that is, first I turn on my Cricut machine, which is on the table beside me. And then if I go to make it, it'll take me to the cutting page and it'll show me what it, is, what it looks like on my map, but then I'll, I don't, I'm not cutting out that little square that I made just for measurement's sake. And so I'll go here, and it's telling me that I'm cutting on a 12 by 12, and it's okay, and as you can see, the seahorses look fine, and the shells look fine, even though I stretched the image a little bit. I'm still happy with that. And then if I click on the continue, it'll take me to where I get to choose which Cricut machine if I had more than one, which I don't, I just have the one that works with Design Space. And it's going to ask me to uh, select on my dial what I wanna do, and so I'm actually gonna select a custom because it's kind of an intricate cut there, and I do want it to, I want it to cut well, and I don't want it to rip. So a lot of times what I'll do is I'll change this and I'll go to Intricate, Cardstock Intricate Cuts, since it's got a pretty busy design on there. And then now it's ready to load on my map. And so I will go ahead and pause this video so that I can switch over to my camera and we can go to my machine. So here's my Cricut. And as you can see, I have a table here and I have my scan and cut and let's see if I could raise this. This is my printer. And then I have my Cricut right here. And as you can see that there's a light blinking, which means that it's ready for me to load because I turned it on. And so basically I'll just come over here and press on the open button. Let me see if I can zoom in. Since it does have score marks, I'm going to need to load the scoring tool and that's gonna go right into this compartment here. And it will prompt me to do that. So I have my, my uh, mat. I'm not used to uh, trying to <laughs> videotape off of the stand, but um, here's my mat with my paper. And so I'm going to stick it in the Cricut to load it. And that's what this little flashing arrow button is, is so it tells me to load. And then on the computer, it's just going to ask me to, uh, it'll say ready to cut, then, then click on the go, which is this flash, flashing button here. And so I have it set to cardstock intricate cuts, which is this custom knob here. Let me zoom in on that. So in case you guys don't have a Cricut and you're not, you're curious. I was asked about this. So let me just zoom in. And then there's like all those little dials. And so I have it on a custom. It's where I get to pick. And so now I'm just going to go ahead and click it and it's going to go. So I'm fast forwarding this. It took about four minutes to cut. And the reason why it took so long is because on the intricate cut setting, it will cut everything twice, which is uh, why I like that setting. Because I always get a good cut anytime there's any kind of intricate uh, type of cutouts that it needs to do. So it doesn't cut as fast as you're seeing right now. But typically, if I just had it on a normal cut, it would have taken a couple minutes to cut out the bag at the most. But like I said, it took twice as long because of the setting that I had it at. 
and I use die cuts with a view paper a lot and I also use the Cricut cardstock a lot and so far those two brands have cut really well as well as the uh, Recollections that also cuts very well from Michaels. Now it's done and that little button there flashes with an arrow to unload the map. Uh, unload the mat, I'm sorry, and so I'll go ahead and press that. And there is the cut. When you go to take it off your mat, you do want to be extra careful around all the areas that have the cutouts, depending upon how sticky your mat is as well. This mat is pretty new, so it is pretty darn sticky. So very carefully, I use my little spatula tool. It's the older one, which I definitely prefer over the newer one that they came out with. And you just gently lift off your die cut from the mat. So now I'm going to reinforce the score lines using my bone folder that the Cricut machine made as it was doing the cut. And it slowly starts to come to shape in the box. So as I'm folding it, I am remembering that it was stretched. So the bottom flap is a little bit longer than it needs to be. And so I am going to take some scissors and trim that bottom cut so that it does, it's not hanging out over my, uh, underneath the box. And I do like to use a strong adhesive tape or liquid glue whenever I'm doing any kind of 3D type of projects. I chose to use my uh, Scrapbooking Made Simple Stacy tape for this. It's a very strong tape and it's very affordable. And so now I just put together my box and fold it in and use the tape to close it all up. Now I want to decorate my box and so I'm using this Mermaid Coast paper by Craftsmith that I got from Michaels and I cut out a few of the decorative strips and I'm going to use this Jaded Blossom border die. It's a stitched scallop border die and I'm going to cut a panel to go across the front of my box and so I'm just lining it up sometimes with the magnetic platform the die can move a little bit and so you just want to get it nice and straight and I'm going to do each end so that it has a scalloped border and then I also cut out a decorative strip of the paper to go across the center of the front of the panel that I'm going to go ahead and stick on the front of the box and so I just measure it out. I just want it to go across the front. It's not going to go all the way around or on the sides. So I'm just bending over the paper so that I know where to cut. And I'm just going to slice those, uh, the paper down so that it fits across the front and makes a nice little decorative strip. So this cutting tool that I'm using, it's an older cutting uh, tool from Creative Memories from back when I used to be a consultant. It's one of my favorite tools. I still use it a lot, so some of you may recognize it. Once I have my front panel cut, I'm going to use some adhesive to adhere it to the front of the box. And after I have it adhered, I know that I'm going to want to add a tag to the front of my little uh, gift bag. And so these dies I got from AliExpress. So I'm gonna use some Nouveau Crystal Drops and this lighter color is called Aquatic Mist and I'm gonna go across the seahorses with it and outline it to give it some sparkle. I'm not exactly sure what I'm gonna do yet. I'm just kinda of going with the flow. I do get the other color which is Honey Gold to do contrast and go on the seashell. And I'm hoping that it's going to look good in the end. <laughs> I'm a little bit regretful as I'm doing it, like, oh no, hopefully hopefully didn't ruin it. And then I go for a darker uh, emerald city to add little dots to the seahorses. And I think that it added just the right amount of sparkle. So in the end, I'm happy that I went ahead and did that. I have this really cute mermaid tail stamp that I got on sale at, at a Beverly's craft shop that was closing near my house. And I'm cutting this tag out with some Tim Holtz watercolor distress uh, marker paper. And so I'm going to go ahead and stamp and emboss this mermaid in gold onto the tag. And I want to color it up with my distress markers or my distress ink. 
to give it a little mermaid tail splash kind of a look. So I'm going to go ahead and put the embossing powder on. I'm going to use my heat tool to heat emboss the gold embossing powder and it's going to look really pretty. I also stamped the sentiment using Versamark pad and I'm going to use the same gold embossing powder to emboss the sentiment as well. So the gold accents to go with the gold on the decorative strip across the front of the paper. And Next, I am going to pull out some Distress Inks and I'm going to use the Cracked Pistachio to paint the mermaid tail. And so I'm kind of going along. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to do yet, but I'm thinking I'm going to make her tail more of the green and then maybe paint some water around it. And so I'm just kind of filling it in, adding some more ink, adding some more water, and then I'm going to heat dry it a little bit. And now I'm going to go work on the water. And so the darkest color is the Mermaid Lagoon. So I'm going to add that across the bottom and just paint it on there with some water. Heat tool, use my heat tool to dry it. And I can't find my tweezers and <laughs> the heat gun is kind of hot. So I'm looking for my tweezers. Hopefully I can use that to hold my tag together as I use my heat tool to dry the distress inks. So now I'm going in with the peacock feathers to give it a little bit of contrast. The darker Mermaid Lagoon with the peacock feathers and I'm going to go in with some of the cracked pistachio to add a little bit of the green into that. And there I finally found my tweezers so I can hold on to it better <laughs> as I use the heat tool. The last color is the tumbled glass and it's the lightest color so I'm just going across the top there with the lightest blue. And so I tend to get a little fussy <laughs> with, the, with the painting. I'm never sure exactly how it's going to look in the end. So I just play with it and I play with it <laughs> until I feel happy with the results. I'll go in there again with some, add some more darker color, add some more of the green. And then just I want the color to pop and I want the, the gold tail to really uh, show nicely over the blue water. So it looks like the swimming tail of the mermaid. And so again and again with the Distress Ink and the water until I feel happy. And now I'm going back in to add some more of the green into the tail because I want it to be a little bit darker than it, than how it dried. And that's the nice thing about the Distress Inks is you can keep going back in to add more color and then it just adds more interest with the little watermarks that you have. I got a fresh bowl of water and so now I'm going to add a little bit of splatter and I'm going to use a paper towel to get some more watermarks on there and until I like how it looks and now I'm going to add some of the Nouveau crystal drops and these are the morning dew so they look like clear water droplets now I'm going to add some of these clear iridescent sequins and I'm going to use my multimedia mat to glue those down. So I just place them where I think I want them to go and then I'll go ahead and I'll add the glue and then stick the sequins right on there. I really like this adhesive. It holds very well so my sequins, they rarely come off. It really does a great job and especially with this watercolor paper you want to use something strong. And so now I'm going to use my Spectrum Noir Sparkle Marker to color in the tail just to give it an extra, extra sparkle because you know you guys know how much I like sparkle. So now it's time to add that tag. So I'm going to go ahead and use some twine, cut it out, loop it through that little hole so that I can go ahead and tie it to that seahorse tail that's on the front of my bag. I also found some sparkly gold tool that I want to use as a bow but first I gotta get that tag adhered so I'm gonna go ahead and loop it around there and pull it through and with the tool I'm just gonna accordion fold it and then I'm also gonna wrap it around that seahorse tail and bring it towards the front and just do a single tie and then I will get some scissors and trim the edges so that it's the right length until I'm happy with how that looks. 
and here it is here is my finished project so I really thank you guys so much for watching. I hope that you enjoyed it. And I really appreciate your thumbs up and your comments. And so I hope you have a wonderful day. Happy crafting, everyone. Bye.